All right, welcome everyone to QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. And I put there in parentheses QuickBooks Enterprise because that will be the focus on the, of the presentation. So we'll be, uh, as we move closer and closer to a QuickBooks Online versus a QuickBooks Enterprise world, um, these are gonna be the two that you're most commonly going to be comparing against. Although there is something, a really big uh, software program in the middle, which is QuickBooks uh, Desktop, um, you're gonna see more and more, of, at least from a marketing perspective, a push towards either QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise. And we'll also talk about how to sell or recommend QuickBooks to your current uh, clients, all right? Anyway, about the host, uh, this is hosted by myself, Hector Garcia. I am a CPA, I'm a QuickBooks Pro Advisor, I'm an Intuit reseller, but I'm 100% independent. Uh, I practice completely separate from Intuit, although Intuit is my partner because I resell their products. And, and I have Steve here, Steve Hall from the Authorized Reseller Program. And I'll allow Steve to kind of just briefly introduce himself. But Steve is my partner at Intuit, uh, in which you know I use him and his team to ask him questions and to understand you know the prices and the different products that I'm going to sell to my clients. All right, so let's talk about the table of contents, which is uh, what we're going to be discussing today. And, uh, and, and you can ask questions along the way any questions you want, Steve or I will answer them, put them in the questions box. If I can get to them today, I will search to the questions box and maybe email you or still email you if you have. We are not going to cover uh, basics or how to's. We're really going to cover this at a very high level and more as a consultant or um, sort of a reseller level. So we'll talk about QuickBooks Online at glance and kind of compare the high level things with QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. Then we'll talk about the, the unique features that each of them have that could cause you to gravitate to one or the other. Then we'll talk about the questions that I ask. I have a, basically, I have a pretty big questionnaire that I take to every one of my consultations and I adopt it uh, based on the, on the industry. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go show you some of the questions that I ask and, and the ones that really spark great conversations about you know, what their business needs are and how the software can help. We'll talk about the feature comparison matrix, which is a spreadsheet that I put together and I'm still sort of adding it as new features go along where I compare all the features that are different. Okay, so there are there are several matrices out there that compare the software packages, but this one in particular, I'm just focused on the things that are different um, because in, in, in many ways, most people, uh, most of your clients will ask you, hey, you know, which version is best for me? And then you you say which whichever it is online or desktop, and then they usually come back to you and say, well, what's the difference, right? So no matter what, even if they ask you to recommend something, I think at one point in time they'll always always ask you what's the difference. So I think having the difference uh, in a matrix is very useful. So you're gonna find that to be a great resource, and we'll, we'll get to that. Then we'll talk about how to test drive QuickBooks, just different ways you can run demos or download trials or run test files and all that you know, for doing demonstrations. So I'll show you all the different ways that there are. And then lastly, we'll talk about the authorized reseller program. If you are already a QuickBooks reseller, then you, know, you probably know all, all this stuff, but if you're just becoming one or you wanna become one, I think this is really good information to have. So let's start with QuickBooks Online at a glance. So first of all, if we're talking about QuickBooks Online, right, as a whole, the pros, the big obvious ones, it's 100% online. No need to buy additional so uh, hardware like a server or, 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 or a special networking equipment for, the, for QuickBooks to work in a network environment. It's really important that if you're working with QuickBooks Desktop that you don't work in Wi-Fi. It needs to be hardwired. So when you work with QuickBooks Online, that doesn't matter. That becomes completely irrelevant whether you're Wi-Fi or hardwired. So that's a really uh, important pro of QuickBooks Online. The other pro is it's platform agnostic. That means that it could be a PC, it could be a Mac, it could be a tablet, it could be Google Chrome, a Chromebook, and it works perfectly. It's mobile friendly, and that's a quote unquote mobile friendly because there is a mobile app. Uh, it's not extremely powerful. I mean, QuickBooks Online in itself is not really that powerful compared to the desktop counterparts, and the, and the mobile app is even less powerful, but it can do some things on the app, and it's getting better and better. Also, no need to 
maintain or update or backup, that, all of that stuff. And it's also API friendly. There's an open source, not open source, but there's, there's an open access API to developers and, and the, the, the rate of growth of new developers and apps uh, talking to QuickBooks Online, it is absolutely incredible. Um, so that's what I mean by API friendly. And it has already 1.5 million users. And that's a pretty big deal uh, because it is bigger than any other software package out there except for the desktop version, which is actually bigger. But what, what that also means is that there's a lot of support that if your accountant uh, you know, is no longer there or your consultant is no longer there, it's easy for you to get another one. And that's a selling point for me. When I tell my clients, when they say, should I buy QuickBooks or should I buy whatever, something else, I say, look, the good thing about QuickBooks is that if I go away, if you don't like me anymore, if you want to work with me anymore, it's relatively easy for you to find another consultant or accountant and, and clients like that because you know, you're also being transparent that you understand that people switch accountants and consultants along the way. Now let's talk about some of the cons. Some of the cons, and it's not listed here, actually, yeah, it is on the very last uh, point, is it is a very light feature set. It doesn't have a lot of administrative uh, type of uh, transactions, not a lot of operating type of transactions. You can't really do much with QuickBooks Online by itself to run your operation other than core accounting functions. For core accounting functions is great, for anything beyond that, not really. Now, it's 100% web-based, that means it requires an internet connection. Internet goes down, you got no QuickBooks. Really important. If you live all the way in the boondocks where they have no internet or extremely slow internet, that also may be a negative experience. It's got limited mobile functionality, as I mentioned earlier. It has an app, but the app itself, you, know, you can't really customize what certain users can see or not see, and that to me is a kind of a problem, and it's very limited functionality. For example, you can't reconcile your banks in your cell phone. Now, not that I don't think you want to, but, but you can't. <laughs> now, there's no way to make a security backup or a restore point. This is so crucial. It's one of my biggest issues with QuickBooks Online is if I'm gonna add an app and I have no idea how that app is gonna behave or download the information, there's no way for me to make a restore point for me to then see uh, you know, whether I like it or not and then go back to where it was before. Maybe a new employee messed things up. And again, with QuickBooks Online, you cannot do that. It's been one of the big uh, pressing points that a lot of consultants have been giving feedback to Intuit that this is really, really crucial. Now, although it has an open API and a lot of uh, developers are developing uh, apps that connect to QuickBooks, it is limited. Uh, the, the type of transactions or the amount of transactions that you can connect with API and, and interact with is small. So you can still only do a few things with third-party apps. Now you can import invoices almost pretty much in its entirety. And that's mostly what most apps end up doing is sending invoices over. But there's other things that third-party apps cannot do. Now another con or another drawback is, is a monthly fee per company. So it's not a one-time investment or a flat fee for unlimited companies, you have to pay per company, per company file, per uh, per QuickBooks file. Okay, so let's move on to desktop at glance. And again, this is this is not uh, desktop by itself. This is desktop in comparison to online, okay? Number one, one of the pros is we're talking about a 25-year-old software. We're talking about a piece of software that has been improved year over year, and it has had a lot of chances for people to give feedback and and add improvements and, and, and that sort of thing. So you're gonna see a very mature program, a program that has gone through a lot of, uh, you know, sort of uh, people uh, giving feedback and it still has glitches and glitches are being fixed every day, but it is one of the really huge uh, pros. The other one is it has a very robust feature set. So it start, especially when you start moving to Premiere, Accountant or Enterprise, um, you can do a lot of things beyond accounting features. You can do, customized forms and customized fields where you can track other things that are beyond the core accounting operations. Now it has a very mature SDK, the software development kit, which is like the API on the desktop world. And this is what um, developers use to develop applications that interact or, or, uh, or send information back and forth from QuickBooks. So there's a lot of legacy developers, a lot of, let's call it old school applications that talk to QuickBooks Desktop, whereas you will see that there isn't that many of the new ones uh, talking to QuickBooks Desktop. So a lot of the newer 
apps only talk to QuickBooks Online because they don't want to develop desktop software. They want to develop only online software and they use the API instead. So that's kind of like one of the huge trends you're going to see in the next five years or so is you're going to see a lot less developers communicate with QuickBooks Desktop and a lot more communicate with QuickBooks Online. And that's really where you, you may see the table start uh, turning. Now, it's got 3.5 million, it's probably four. I mean, I, this, this stat is... Is a stat that I, I've seen different numbers out there, but it's got 3.5, between 3.5 and 4 million users already. This is the largest user base of any accounting software in the United States. I would say the only other software out there uh, that you could possibly say that more people use for accounting purposes other than QuickBooks would be Excel, okay? Which is not even an accounting software. I mean, it's used for that, but it's not accounting software. And uh, the Pro Premier options have a one-time purchase option. So don't doesn't require an annual subscription. So QuickBooks still offers just software purchase. And that for some people, smaller companies, uh, that's a really interesting um, uh, pro, okay? Now on the con side or on the drawbacks is, well, number one, if you're working with multiple uh, users in a multi-user environment, you will have medium to high IT costs. You gotta get all your computers have to be PC, they have to be Windows. They all have to uh, you know, connect wired. You have to have a server. You have to have user permissions. You have to maintain the server and the network. Can't really work over Wi-Fi. Um, and that's what I call to medium to IT cost. And then if uh, medium to high, and then if you want to work remotely, it's going to be even a little bit higher because you have to open firewalls, add security. I mean, working remotely in QuickBooks Desktop is not as friendly as working with QuickBooks Online. Also, the, the software still feels a little bit outdated. You know, it's, it's, it's again, it's 25 years old, kind of building upon, upon, upon each other each year with the improvements. It doesn't, doesn't feel fresh and new like, uh, like QuickBooks Online does. And you know what? For most people, that's not a big deal. But a lot of these millennials that are starting their own businesses, they're used to the way uh, apps work in phones. They're used to the modern type of, type of programming and apps and, and, a, and a desktop software f f could feel dated for them, right? So, so remember, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, if, if, you, if your client is, a, you know, a baby boomer and has been using a desktop software forever, it'll probably not matter, but most of their employees will likely to be millennials. So you will find that millennials uh, tend to pick up QuickBooks Online super quick and QuickBooks Desktop still they struggle with, and it, it is because they're used to a different platform, different interface. Anyway, um, another con is that there's no mobile functionality. You actually would need a third-party app uh, to be able to do anything with a mobile application with, that pertains to QuickBooks Desktop. And the last one is uh, very large files tend to uh, you know, become slow. If you don't condense it and maintain it and run verifies and run rebuilds, it could also lead to corruption, something that we have not seen in QuickBooks Online yet. So that's kind of like the two comparison at a glance. So, and, and, and I'm not trying to sway you, by the way. I am not trying to sway you uh, whether one way or the other. I'm not trying to convince you that you should move your clients to QuickBooks Online. I'm not trying to convince you that you should change your mind. I, I, all I want to do is be as objective as possible in pointing out the differences and giving the options. Because the problem is, is QuickBooks Online is so much less expensive than QuickBooks Enterprise or, or a hosted uh, type of environment for QuickBooks Pro or Premiere that it, it just, it's just very attractive for someone to say, you know what, I'll just pay the $40 a month and not have to worry about anything else. I get it. But the problem is that you know, there are some significant differences. So let me jump to the top unique features that, that kind of, it, it's, 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 it's the best way to answer that question that people ask, hey, what's the difference between QuickBooks Online and Enterprise? And again, this could be a very long answer. It could take you an hour to answer, but I think that this slide encapsulates it really well. So difference between QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks uh, Desktop, mostly QuickBooks Enterprise. QuickBooks Online is web-based, no need for servers, no need for remote access, um, uh, any type of remote access. Very powerful bank feeds, direct connection with the bank, Mac, PC, tablet access, easy collaboration with your accountant. By the way, that's huge. For a lot of people, that's the biggest thing, okay? Um, no need to copy files around. And then some of the forms and the reports can be automated. Now, with QuickBooks Enterprise, top unique features. Well, we have granular, granular permission structure. 
So if we want to delegate to some people uh, certain access, uh, but without giving them access to the entire accounting, QuickBooks Enterprise does that very well. Uh, highly customizable fields and forms. So if you, if you want to try to do things that maybe QuickBooks wasn't designed for right from the get-go, it is likely that with QuickBooks Enterprise, you could probably pull it off with custom fields and custom forms. Also, reports are highly customizable. Plus, you got the advanced reporting module, plus the, you know, the highly customizable features of QuickBooks Desktop overall. And then you got on the Platinum version of QuickBooks Enterprise, advanced inventory and advanced pricing. So how do I, how do I uh, narrow this down to the best fit? So if it's a service-based business that does mostly cash basis accounting, has very little light inventory, they, they want fast data entry with bank feeds. They want high automation with cash basis accounting via bank feeds. Uh, they want to use a mobile device and they really don't need complex reporting, don't need job costing, don't need inventory management. I automatically think QuickBooks Online is the best for them. On the other side, if it's a wholesale business, manufacturing, any professional firm that does project management, construction, nonprofit, or any company that wants any type of robust reporting, any type of inventory management, uh, any type of um, managing multiple businesses with, a, with one fixed predictable price, whether it's an annual fee or one-time fee, uh, and you know, customization without having to add or pay for additional apps, then if that's the one, then I move over to QuickBooks Enterprise. The hardest things are the ones that are in the middle. Those are the toughest ones. So when you, when you look at those two best fits, those are basically what I call the two sides of the spectrum. You know, if a company is, is highly towards the left side, I'm probably going to be in QuickBooks Online. Uh, uh, highly towards the right side, I'm probably going to be in QuickBooks en en Enterprise. And the ones that are in the middle are the tough ones, right? So I want you to, uh, in, in the questions box, I want you to ask uh, questions about particular cases in which you don't know, or maybe if you want my suggestion based on your use case, and I'll try to answer it towards the end of the webinar. But I wanted to kind of uh, share that with you. All right, so let's move on to uh, pricing comparison. And this is not exact pricing. I, I wanted to kind of round the numbers just to kind of get our heads wrapped around pricing because I believe pricing plays a really critical role. Uh, the problem is that when you're a, a consultant or an accountant and you think that your job is to find your client the, the cheapest accounting uh, software, then you're probably not a really good consultant, okay? Your, your job should be finding your clients the best solution for their needs because even if you pay a couple thousand dollars more in software, but it could save you an entire employee's payroll or it could save you, you know, hours a day, hours a week, hours a month, you know, they get that money back. They get that investment back in time, time that they can invest back into their business, spend in client development, marketing, whatever, right? So you really don't want to think about software as the least expensive option. Forget about that. Uh, good consultants, not because they're resellers and they get commission, but uh, good consultants, uh, you know, think about solutions, all right? So um, one, I just had one little mistake here. QuickBooks uh, Pro for three users cost about $500. Whoops, wrong, wrong price. Okay, so let's compare. So if we're talking about QuickBooks, uh, for example, if we're talking about QuickBooks online and we're talking about the plus version which is the highest version you're going to pay about forty dollars a month so about forty dollars a month and uh and it comes with five users so that's really really important quickbooks pro is going to cost about 250 dollars one time fee and it will last for at least three years because that's the, that's the time that quickbooks intuit supports it so to run payroll online banking payments any connected services you're gonna to have to have a version that's no more than three years old. That's why I say 250 every three years. So QuickBooks Pro for one user is 250 every three years or 500 every three years. If you break that down per month, that is way cheaper than QuickBooks uh, online. But, but again, we, we don't think in those dimensions because if you think about the, the IT costs of having some sort of remote system and things like that, that could also be a, a challenge, okay? So, so it's not a direct comparison. Now, QuickBooks Premier, which is definitely from a feature perspective, uh, much, in my opinion, better than QuickBooks Online, that's already in the $450 uh, price range for the first user and about $1,300 every three years for a, for a five user. So if you compare Premier and Plus, 
five user, and you take $1,300 divided by three years, you get roughly about $400 um, a year, sorry, $400 uh, a year, correct? And that's about what QuickBooks Online Plus is per year. So I think a five-year five year license of Premiere versus a five-year, sorry, five-user license of Premiere versus a five-user QuickBooks Online Plus are the ones that are most similar pricing-wise. Again, so if you want to compare apples to apples by using pricing as the comparison point, QuickBooks Online Plus and QuickBooks Premiere, five users are the, are the closest ones. So when you're working with clients that don't need any of the Premier features, don't need to work remotely, uh, they work on their desktop or on their laptop, and um, they're the only users. You could probably get away with QuickBooks Pro for $250 every three years, and it's hard to justify versus QuickBooks Online. You would have to go back into you know, the other high-level features like mobile-friendly, web-based, and that sort of thing to sway the client more towards QuickBooks Online. So I hope that that's a good uh, explanation. Now let's talk about uh, QuickBooks Enterprise in a hosted environment, which is the closest thing to trying to get uh, QuickBooks Desktop uh, compared to QuickBooks Online, apples to apples. I mean, uh, not apples, to, but I'll say apples to pears, I would say. Not apples to oranges, but apples to pears, because uh, QuickBooks Enterprise is just much, much uh, heavier and deeper and more more, uh, more feature-rich program, but we're talking about putting them both on the cloud. If, if you're going to compare a five-user hosted version of QuickBooks Enterprise versus QuickBooks Online, we're talking about $40 a month versus $450 a month. So we're talking about possibly 10 times more for QuickBooks Enterprise uh, Platinum. So we can't, we can't compare these with price because it just doesn't make any sense. It just wouldn't make any sense to compare them with price. I mean, there are some small differentiators like uh, with enterprise gold or platinum payroll is included. So you can add the cost of payroll to QuickBooks Online to compare them. But uh, you know, but, uh, but that, that, those are more unique scenarios. I'm gonna give you my email at the end and if you have a particular um, question, uh, just email me and I'll be able to answer that. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about some of the questions that I ask uh, my clients. I would say more of my new clients trying to <clears throat> trying to figure out what's the best software package uh, to use. Um, and in some cases, when my clients tell me, "Hey, I'm thinking about upgrading to QuickBooks Online," and they, they call it upgrading, which you know I, I would have a difference in opinion if upgrade is the right word. But so people are saying, "I'm I'm thinking about changing to QuickBooks Online," or "I'm thinking to moving to QuickBooks Enterprise." So I'm not sure if I'm in the right version. Can you help me figure this out? Or, you know, well, is it worth it for me to move online? Th those are the typical questions I get from my clients. So this is what, these are the, the, some of the questions that I ask, right? And these are broken down by, uh, I would say five groups. We have access, job costing and reports, construction, inventory, and manufacturing. So we have six groups of questions here. So let's start with the basic ones, which I, I call the access questions. First question I ask, how many people need to access your accounting system? Now, let me add an important caveat to that. Um, a lot of my clients only have two or three people touching their books, in some cases, just one, because they don't really trust the rest of the employees to be looking at the numbers in there. I don't want my employees to look at somebody else's paycheck. I don't want my employees to know how much money I have in the bank. I don't want my employees to know my customer's phone number because I don't want them to steal them from me or export the client list if they... If I, if I fire them you know, and then steal my customers, whatever. People have all sorts of excuse, uh, excuses not to add their staff members to their accounting system. So typically they'll give you their answer, whatever the answer there is. But then the second question I ask, it's much more crucial, is if you had total control of what your employees can see or cannot see, what can they access? Would you give more people than the previous answer you gave me access to in other words would you love the fact that you can, that you that you have the peace of mind that you can delegate some tasks without worrying that an employee has access to data you previously were kind of freaking out about them having access to and once we get to that question all sorts of great um conversations happen because people start telling well you know i would love my warehouse guy to be able to see whether a product has been shipped or not you know i would love my salespeople to see, you know, if the, the stuff that we ordered 
got here, you know, but, but, but before I didn't want to give him access because I was just so afraid of them seeing stuff they weren't supposed to be seeing. And the minute that conversation starts moving deep into that, you know that you get completely scrapped the, even the thoughts of going to QuickBooks Online and you're going to move straight to QuickBooks Enterprise because that's a huge selling point to a lot of people. And I'm telling you, I know a lot of consultants, a lot of accountants that never even bothered to ask these two questions, the first two. And some ask the first one because you have to know how many users you're selling. But that second question is crucial and it completely changes the conversation. Now, third question is, will everybody be working in the same location in a, in a local area network? Or will there be some, some people working remotely? And also, what does remote look like? Is that remote from a different office? Remote from their house? Remote while they travel? Remote every once in a while? 100% remote out of the country? All these things are really important. I have a client, a manufacturing client in China that says, yeah, we're going to have everybody working remotely. Well, guess what? It was almost impossible for the people in China to log in remotely to a U.S. company. I guess China had blocked some of the IP addresses and stuff. So, so if I didn't, you know, if we didn't ask that before, I could have sold them the world in a you know, hosted environment and then not test first whether, you know, people from the U.S. can access a Chinese server or vice versa. So that's another kind of interesting concept. Also, um, are, all, are all the users on, on a Windows PC? Are there some Mac users? I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, my clients, nine times out of 10, their entire office uses PC, but the boss uses a Mac. Almost always. The, all the staff members are on a Windows, but the manager has a Mac. And then what ends up happening is, is that person is completely ousted from being able to access the system um, if we're working on a desktop environment, unless we set up remote desktop connection for the Mac to access. And sometimes the, Mac, the one Mac user will say, look, if I don't have access to this thing, the whole deal is off. And then you have to kind of cater to them and you may offer QuickBooks online because that's the only option you have. All right, so that's a really important question to ask. Get you thinking about, hey, should I, should I do hosting environment because there's at least a couple of Mac users or are there enough Mac users where maybe we should just go to QuickBooks online uh, as a whole? And then again, there's other things that come into play. <clears throat> the other one is, do you ever think you're gonna use a phone or a tablet to perform an accounting function? And I'm telling you, most people will say, yeah, of course I want to be able to do stuff on my phone. But then you say, okay, what are the things that you would do in a phone or a tablet? Can I, give me a picture of where would you be doing what, doing what, whatever function in your brain you're thinking uh, you could be doing with your phone or tablet. And, and if, if they draw a blank or tell you, well, I don't know, then the phone or tablet is not an important thing. But if they say, no, of course, I, when I'm in the second floor, I want to check if a sales order has been you know, shipped already on my phone and I want to mark it shipped or whatever, right? So when they start talking about that, well, you know that QuickBooks Online cannot do that because we're talking about a sales order. Uh, and you know, QuickBooks Desktop cannot do that unless we're talking about a, another app as well. So again, it, it just does expand the conversation and allow you to be in a better position um, to do this because it, one of the things that's very frustrating is to sell someone a two, three, four, five thousand dollar piece of software and then afterwards you implement it, you realize you need another app on top of that and they have to learn a new system and, and you could really come out bad as a consultant if you don't ask these questions up front. Trust me, a lot of people just have the expectation that things just work in a phone or a tablet. And I'm telling you who's at fault in this is into it because they're the ones that run a Super Bowl commercial with someone in a coffee shop, you know, doing things on the phone, on the phone or in the tablet. And they're saying QuickBooks is great, mobile. But then when we are sitting there selling QuickBooks, we're selling a solution that doesn't really exist because you know the way they picture it is just not what it looks like in reality. So I'm telling you, you have to have that phone tablet conversation. People have very skewed concepts of what you can do or you should be doing in a phone or a tablet with QuickBooks. Now, the last question from the Access group is, does your accountant collaborate with you now? And if they do, how? Tell me what does your accountant do? A lot of times they don't even know what the accountant does, but, <laughs> but you can say, does your accountant collaborate with QuickBooks with you now? If so, how? Explain to me how often, what do they do? What kind of questions do they ask you? How much, how much do you feel you're working as a team? How much are they sort of working solo? Are they working on their own QuickBooks file in parallel to yours? Are they locking yours down? 
so you can't do anything afterwards? Does your QuickBooks tie with your tax return? All these things are really important to ask. And then a follow-up question is, if, if, you're, if, it's, if your accountant is not collaborating or the collaboration itself is not something that you, you think is working, how do you picture your accountant or consultant collaborating with you? What Best case scenario, what would your accountant be doing? What would your consultant, bookkeeper, QuickBooks consultant be doing? And let, let this be an open-ended question. Let them speak. Let them speak. Listen to what their needs are. I'm telling you, not just a QuickBooks sale conversation happens there, but this is where the service uh, gets sold. This is where you understand their needs. This is what you understand what's valuable to them. And if you do anything other than selling software, if you do any actual servicing or your accounting, this actually helps uh, quite a bit. All right. <clears throat> okay. So let me uh, let me open it up for Steve real quick. Steve, Steve you think uh, you want to add anything to that uh, that first set of questions? Okay. So uh, one of the questions I'm getting here from the from the chat is, you know, hey, I understand these are the questions to ask, but then how do I know what to recommend based on the answers? Well, you know, again, this, your experience matters a lot. In some cases, you know, maybe, maybe you want to partner with someone that knows the stuff really well. You can email me. I'm going to give you my email. You can you send me your case, and I will tell you what I what I would recommend. Uh, you know, with, with the answers that you have. But m most of it, it would be pretty easy. You know, if 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 they want to collaborate with the accountant because they want the accountant to reconcile the books, if they want to be using a phone or a tablet to pull an invoice or a report. If they, you know, only have one or two people using it and they don't need granular controls, if they have multiple uh, operating systems, that may skew you at this point towards QuickBooks Online. But but there are other questions that are, I believe they're more important than just access. Access is a big one. And by the way, if um, if QuickBooks Online was a person or, or a thing that would like sort of uh, vouch for itself or or be running for president or whatever, this would be the bullet points that they would try to focus in, right? That QuickBooks Online has better access, easiest access. This is how QuickBooks Online wins the debate. It's just easier access, simpler access, no need for hardware software requirements. Now, once we start digging into the functionality that matters most to, uh, to companies that are maybe in a, in a construction business or they need to do job costing or, or profitability per job tracking, that sort of thing. These are the questions that matter. So question number one, do you want to track profitability by job? So let's say the answer is yes, of course, because everybody says yes, of course, to that, right? But then it says, well, do you want it at the job level? You know, like overall, we made profit on this job, yes or no. Overall, we made a couple thousand bucks on this job, yes or no. Or do I want to go at the item level? That means I want to plan for the job. It's project management, construction. I want to do line by line and tell you this line will cost me this much. I expect to charge this much. This line will cost me this much. I expect to charge that much. And if the answer is item based, then QuickBooks Online is completely thrown out of the equation. Unless you want to combine QuickBooks Online with some app, um, you know, you're going to be working with QuickBooks um, desktop at this point. If they are, if the answer item level. Now, the other one is, <clears throat> do you need to display any special information on your estimates or invoices. In other words, send them, send them a, a, a copy of the invoice that QuickBooks Desktop uh, prints and a copy of the invoice that QuickBooks Online prints and ask them, hey, what would your ideal invoice look like? And let them draw on it, let them paint on it, let them draw graphics and write stuff on it. And then based on the stuff they write on it, you will know whether or not you can use QuickBooks uh, Online with their limited customizability of forms or you have to move to QuickBooks Desktop. Now, another one to ask is, what type of financial information beyond the P&L and balance sheet do you need to be able to see? Like, what do you want to track? What's important for you to track? Uh, and let, let them answer, right? You know, if, if, if it's other than profit, if it's sales by state or something like that, uh, sales by zip code, you, you know you're going to have to customize the reports and QuickBooks Online really won't, won't help you with that too much. Uh, the last question to ask is, do you manage or want to manage payroll internally uh, or do you prefer to outsource? That's really important because uh, if they say, yes, I want to manage payroll internally or I'll entertain the idea and they have 100 employees, QuickBooks Enterprise, Gold or, um, or uh, Platinum offer a really competitive price for payroll. Whereas maybe in a QuickBooks Online environment, 100 employees 
would actually be pretty expensive because it's five dollars per employee plus twenty five dollars, so you're gonna pay five hundred dollars a month for uh, QuickBooks Payroll and QuickBooks Online versus potentially pay an additional three four hundred dollars a year for the whole thing to run QuickBooks uh, pay Payroll in your enterprise. So yeah, that, that's an important question to ask because that does play into the the question about uh, pricing. Okay, what if it's a construction business? So one of the questions is, do you need to track change orders? And, and as you know, QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Pro don't track change orders or don't track changes to estimates. And QuickBooks Premier Accountant and Enterprise can do that. Do you need a, a report that shows you all the active jobs and their statuses? So job statuses is something that QuickBooks Desktop has only. Do you use percentage of completion method or completed contract method. Now, this is terminology for the construction world, but if they say percentage of completion method, that means that they need a report called the work in progress report, something that only QuickBooks Enterprise can manage, right? If you do use QuickBooks Online for construction, you are going to manually construct reports, work in process reports, and that can take hours, or you're gonna to have to use a third party app. And then also, do you track payroll costs at the job level? really really important because if you if you do job costing for payroll you can't use quickbooks online yet you would have to use quickbooks desktop only now let's talk about inventory questions do you track customer back orders in other words the customer orders something we we didn't we didn't ship it yet do we need to know that we have things pending to be shipped that's called a sales order only quickbooks premier accountant enterprise can do that do you receive partial shipments from vendors and you want to know how much of this PO has been received, right? As of now, QuickBooks Online doesn't do it. There's some talks and rumors that this feature will come out soon, but um, you know that's another question to ask. And that would definitely, if the answer is yes, that will move you towards QuickBooks uh, uh, Desktop. Do you have multiple inventory locations or, or do you have bin numbers within a single location? So if they say yes to that, you're gonna have to go to QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum. Do you track inventory in FIFO? And that, that, that may be a question that maybe you shouldn't ask if the people are not very savvy on accounting. But long story short, uh, IRS will require for you to have GAAP financial statements. You know, these are accepted financial statements by accounting principles. And a FIFO, it, it's the only one that QuickBooks can provide that can do that. So if the answer is yes, uh, that could be a QuickBooks Online recommendation or it could be a QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum recommendation. But uh, QuickBooks Pro, Premier, and Accountant only use average costing. They don't use FIFO. That's a really important little thing to, to, uh, to talk about. Now, do you track lot numbers or serial numbers, right? So if the answer is yes, of course, you're going to have to move to QuickBooks uh, Enterprise Platinum or consider QuickBooks Online with an app. Now, I used to ask barcodes because they added barcodes in 2013, I believe. But I don't ask for barcodes anymore just because I'm telling you the barcode functionality in QuickBooks Enterprise, it's, it's I don't wanna say horrible, but it's just not very useful. So I wouldn't try to sell, I wouldn't try to sell QuickBooks Enterprise on, on, just on barcodes, right? And barcode is a nice thing, but not the, the, the sellable feature. Are you receiving orders through e-commerce? And that, that could be, that could sway you either, either or. Um, you really want to know about the volume or whether it's Amazon or a shopping cart, you may start thinking you may need a third party app. I mean, this, this, this is more for understanding what applications you're gonna need for integration. And do any of your suppliers or customers require EDI? If they say, what's EDI? You move to the next question, right? Done, <laughs> really important, right? So, um, so that's it. So, um, so EDI is something that they would know. This is. Uh, electronically sending invoices and purchase orders uh, through the internet, basically. All right, so that's the, the inventory questions. Now, what about manufacturing and assembly type of businesses? So one is, do you assemble final products from raw materials? If they say yes, you have to go at least to QuickBooks Premier, accountant or enterprise. Do you track work in progress or work in process for partially assembled products or materials are in process? Again, if the answer is yes, you have to go to QuickBooks Premier, Accountant, or Enterprise. Do you track multiple units of measure? If the answer is yes, you have to go to Premier, Accountant, or Enterprise. Do you wanna be able to change components on the fly from your bill of materials? That means that you have a fixed bill of materials, but for one particular assembly, you wanna change some components. 
uh, that's a, a customizable mobile materials. If they say yes, you could only move to QuickBooks Enterprise at this point for uh, changing bill of materials on the fly. Okay, all right, I'm almost out of saliva here. <laughs> all right, let me, uh, let me unmute Steve. And what I'll do is, Steve, real quick, um, you, you, you mind telling me if I missed something? Is there something that you wanted to add to that? Uh, to that? Right, right. So I wanted to tell you, if you go to this website, uh, bit.ly slash QBO VS QBES, and I put it on the chat. Um, uh, I put it on the chat so you can click on it and you can, on the screen, you wanna type it, take a picture of this. This is a resource I've been working, uh, uh, I've been working on for at least a month. And it, by the way, this takes an enormous amount of work to put this thing together. And it's available to the public now. It's available to anyone that has this link. I mean, it's not like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not on Intuit's website or anything. This is a resource that I put together and some of the people that I know that I work with, uh, like Michelle Long and some of the other QuickBooks consultants have, have, have given me direct feedback. Anyway, what this matrix is, is this compares uh, feature by feature, QuickBooks Essentials plus Enterprise and Pro Premier uh, accountant in the desktop world and you can go feature by feature and see which one uh, has it which one doesn't have it and if there's a you know if there's a, a, some additional notes to that you can uh, it will say yes but or no but and it would have those those notes in there um, and, and my email is in here up here Hector at Garcia CPA.com if you think I missed something or something wasn't clear email me I'll make some changes to this matrix this is this is still a live document a living breathing document. It has 121 lines. I basically compare 121 features that that have a, a distinct contrast between the two, right? So I'm not gonna add something called invoices and then put and say that they all do it. Like so, anything that they all do and they all do fairly similar, I'm excluding from the list. I am only including the things that are different. The things that are different. Okay. Um, okay, so in the handout section, if you if you download the handout section, I put in the I put in the the presentation, I put in this matrix in PDF if you want to print it, and I also put the reseller benefits. Okay, so I'm telling you this 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 spreadsheet is going to come in really really handy for you in the future. It's it's actually a great thing to have out, and together with the other questions to then you know, start discussing about you know, the, the, the answers to the questions and compare it to the matrix and it will help you, uh, it will help you make, um, make um, a, a, a recommendation. All right, the last thing I want to talk about, well, the last two things, one is test driving QuickBooks. I mean, for, for if, you're, if you're an accountant, a consultant or a reseller, okay, um, you, you're going to want to like have QuickBooks open while you're having these discussions with your clients. And by the way, no one should ever for free, sit down with someone for an hour or two to help them decide what software to buy. I, I'm, I'm completely against that. Somebody tells me, hey, I wanna get together so you can tell me what to buy. I charge for that. I absolutely charge for that. I don't care that they're buying it for me. I don't care that I may get a commission on the sale. I don't care. If you want to tap my knowledge and you want me to ask you these questions, you want me to make a recommendation, you will pay for this, okay? That being said, okay, there's a couple of ways that you can, um, that you can run trials. So for QuickBooks Online, you can go to quickbooks35.com and I'll show you real quick. That's a website that I, that I, as a domain that I, that I created to forward and I'll tell you why I like this one. That way you don't even have to like even think about it. Quickbooks35.com takes you straight to QuickBooks Online. It takes you straight to the three choices and you can start the free trial. It won't ask you for a credit card. And if you if if you, if you keep it, it will it will have a thirty five discount for life. Now you shouldn't recommend this to your clients if you're going to sell QuickBooks, because obviously you know this is not going to give you credit. This is just for you to run a test real quick if you want to run a test from scratch. Okay, so if you want to run a test from scratch, that would be a great website to have. It's QuickBooks thirty five 
uh, com. The other one you can do is you can Google QBO test drive, exactly as you see it on the slides, QBO test drive. And if you search that in Google, and I'll show you real quick. So I'm just going to go to Google here and put, uh, whoops, that was Gmail. If I put QBO test drive and you click on it and it'll ask you for a code. Typically, it'll ask you for a code. In this case, I think I've already logged into one and it will open up QuickBooks Online right away and it'll open up a sample file. So you'll be able to start playing with it right away. Somebody else tells you, does QuickBooks Online do this or do that? Go to it and check. Sometimes, you know, you, you're not expected to know these things uh, from memory, okay? Now, with QuickBooks Desktop, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can search in Google QuickBooks Enterprise Test Drive, okay? So I'm gonna Google that, show you what, so I'm just gonna search in Google QuickBooks Enterprise Test Drive, and then it's typically the first link that is not uh, under advertise, and you click on the type. So you click on, let's say, for example, con Contractor Edition, and it will take you straight into a Right Networks demo, which is awesome because you can test the speed of the hosted environment of QuickBooks Enterprise. So we'll open up in Right Networks. Uh, you will know the speed right away and you're going to be up and running in a sample file in QuickBooks Enterprise and you can compare them. So if I want to check something in QuickBooks Online here and in QuickBooks Enterprise here, no need to install software on anyone's computer. You can do this right from your client's computer. It is the single best way to compare the two. Now, there isn't a live demo uh, of Desktop Pro, Premiere or Accountant in a hosted environment like this, only Enterprise. So you would have to know what stuff is unique to enterprise if you wanted to compare it with maybe pro or premiere but it's actually a great way for you to quickly compare like for example i want to see what one invoice looks like on the online world and then what the invoice looks like on the on the desktop world and, and by the way invoices are probably the best starting point so if you show this to a client this is what an invoice looks like on the desktop and then this is what an invoice looks like online they're extremely different, right? So it let, lets you understand that it's, you know, it's gonna be two different training programs for you to learn one or the other. I mean, this is really, really good compare and contrast. So I strongly recommend that. Now, the other thing you can do, let me go to Google here. If you wanna install a 30-day trial, you put QuickBooks trial link, QuickBooks desktop trial link, sorry. QuickBooks desktop trial link, and, uh, and by the way, don't worry, if you register for the webinar live, you're gonna get an email with all these links, with all these things, that way you don't have to remember these. Um, but if you search that, it will take you to the website where you can download Canadian version, UK version, US version, and you can download any of the desktop versions as a free trial, 30-day trial, okay? 30-day trial, okay? Um, so that's a really, really uh, good resource, so again, this is for test driving. And when you're doing a presentation, a sales presentation, whatever, it's important to have them there handy. Okay. So uh, $100, $100 bounty for QuickBooks Online activations. So if you sell QuickBooks Online, not through the wholesale program, just through the resale program, you get a straight commission of $100. If you sell a new QuickBooks Enterprise, you get 25% commission, the commission structure went up. 5% uh, commission for Renewals, this is awesome, right? So every year that they renew, you get a commission on that. 35% residuals on payments. Uh, this is um, whatever Intuit makes on the, the fee for the, the profit on the fee that they charge for payments. You get 35% you get of that. And so you can build the residual business really quick, really fast. And then if you're going to resell Pro Premier Accountant or POS, and that, that was supposed to have an S at the end, POS. Uh, POS products, uh, you get 35 to 50% of MSRP depending on the sales and stuff like that. So you can resell them at whatever price you want. So I strongly recommend that you contact uh, Steve and be part of the reseller program. If you're not already, if you're already part of it and you have a different contact person, that's fine. Okay, uh, no problem. All right, I think that's it. Let me just uh, make sure there's my slide. Okay, so my email is hector at garciacpa.com. If you have any questions, email me. Um, you know, it, it, some, some people asking here, you know, Hector, how can you be a resource to us? Well, if you want any sort of advanced training, uh, whether it's for a group webinar style or remote one-on-one, -on -one, you can contact me. We can set something up. We can even travel to your site. And we also have a training room in Miami. So if you happen to be in the South Florida area, 
come check out our training room. We can also do custom training uh, there as well. 